first of all, you, you have to know two things. Um, <clears throat> it was about 1960. At that time, 90% of the visits to a doctor or a practitioner were for infectious disease, childbirth, and acute injury. Today, 90, over 90% of the visits to a practitioner are for <clears throat> an inflammation-related health disorder, meaning something uh, the immune system is compromised and as a result, pain is being manifest in the body. So <clears throat> uh, the second thing you need to kind of, just for um, a metaphor and reference, is animals who sleep in the wild, who sleep grounded on the earth, they, have, they do not experience inflammation. They do not have cardiovascular disease, cancer, diabetes, lupus, MS, Alzheimer's. They have none of these modern health disorders. Yet animals who live indoors with their owners, they all manifest similar health disorders to their owners, especially diabetes and inflammation related uh, arthritic type pains and so on. So <clears throat> anyhow, so something happened in 1960 that changed because ever since 1960, there's an exponential growth of uh, lupus, MS, arthritis, cancer, all of these um, what we call inflammation related health disorders. So, so what happened in 1960, we, we, we started wearing rubber soled shoes. We invented um, synthetic sole shoes yes. in about 1960. And then over the period from 1960 to, to today, now 95% of us wear rubber sole shoes all the time and we're no longer naturally grounded. So <clears throat> how inflammation works or how inflammation is created in your body is <clears throat> first of all, you can't have inflammation in your body when you're grounded but further. And then I realized that it's real. So I went out to um, UCLA in California, which is a big university. And I went to them and I asked them uh, <clears throat> if they would be, you know, what they knew first of all, and uh, if they'd be interested in doing a study. And they really said, well, you expect us to believe that somebody's gonna stick a rod in the earth and tie a wire around it, and then go tie that wire around somebody's toe, and they're gonna sleep better, they're gonna feel better. They said, you're nuts, get out of here. <laughs> and, but anyhow, we joked around and had fun that day, but anyhow, they had no basis to believe or no understanding of electrical. Uh, they understand biology, um, uh, and but anyhow, so my whole background is electrical. So anyhow, it was a big puzzle. So I decided to, with the help of a couple of the students from UCLA to um, do our own study uh, away from the university. And we, we grounded about 60 people. 30 of them were placebo ground. 30 of them were active ground. And then we, uh, took a survey of them and we had a nurse that handled all of that. And then 30 days later, we went back and did a survey again to find out what effect the grounding was having on them. The number one thing that everybody said, they slept better, they felt better and they had less pain. Some people had um, uh, significant changes in their menstrual cycle or their um, issues that they have with PMS uh, several had less tinnitus or um, you know, just all kinds of benefits. Everybody was saying they felt better overall. And so this was, and I remember one lady said to me, well, this can't be a cure-all. <laughs> and I said, well, I don't know that it's a cure-all, but I think that uh, maybe it's a cause-all, the fact that we're no longer naturally grounded. It's affecting our bodies. So anyhow, that's kind of how it all got started. And since that time, we have done uh, probably 25 peer reviewed published studies uh, to go in and <clears throat> uh, measure the effects of grounding on the body. And it affects everything from 
uh, uh, cortisol secretion, you know, your 24 hour cortisol secretion, which is your stress hormone. It affects, um, if you have pain in your body, um, the pain disappears quite rapidly. If you have inflammation, mm -hmm. inflammation in the body, it disappears rapidly. Uh, <clears throat> pain is a byproduct of inflammation. So by reducing grounding, it puts out the fire and the inflammation, and that's what reduces the pain. Yes, yes, sorry, sorry, yes. So that's, that's how I got here. <laughs> yes, oh yes. So you, you accidentally discovered it, huh? Yes, it was, it was quite by accident. I had spent 30 years in the industry of grounding, um, but I never thought about grounding the human body. I just, grounding equipment uh, and yes. cable, yeah. Yes. So it was- So, no, go ahead, yes. No, I'll go ahead, you. yes. <laughs> So uh, you were mentioning that, you know, the, the whole process, your journey, how it happened. And um, you mentioned that it helps with inflammation and pain as well. Um, but could you uh, say more about the signs of what happens in the body? Uh, I, I've watched the movie and like, uh, you know, but I would also like the viewers to know it from your mouth again, you know, the signs uh, behind it how it helps with it. And inflammation is, you know, body on fire, meaning there's a fire in the body. And the pain is the message to the brain that the body is on fire, it has a problem. So, but anyhow, what causes inflammation is you have a injury or a pathogen or something and your immune system um, <clears throat> sends a neutrophil, which is a white blood cell over to a pathogen or a damaged cell. And it actually wraps itself around that cell and releases what they call reactive oxygen species. And the word reactive means that they're electrically charged, that they can steal electrons. So when the neutrophil wraps itself around it and releases these reactive oxygen species, they rip the electrons away from the cell and destroy it and damage it. That's how the immune system gets rid of pathogens and gets rid of damaged cells. The problem comes is if there's any excess radicals left over from that normal immune response, then those electrically charged molecules will steal an electron from an adjacent cell and damage it. It's called oxidative stress. It oxidizes a close by cell. Then a message comes out to the immune system again, something's still here getting me. So a, <clears throat> the immune system sends another neutrophil and it cleans up that problem. And then in the same time, it releases, it still has more excess reactive oxygen. So it's, it's just continuous collateral damage, like burning a log, it's a continuous fire. So the reason that this happens is because before when we, when we were grounded or were, wore leather shoes, our bodies were negatively charged, meaning we had enough free electrons in our body that there could be no charge. So there was an abundance of free electrons. But once we started wearing shoes, then our body becomes short of electrons. And now <clears throat> instead of those reactive oxygen species being neutralized by excess free radicals or free electrons in the body, uh, they, they, they're stealing electrons from healthy cells. So as soon as we ground the body, then the body becomes flooded with these free electrons and it prevents the neutrophil oxygen or oxidative burst from damaging adjacent cells. So it's how the body used to protect itself from the immune system. So it's, uh, it's a little challenging to understand what I just said, but it's really quite no, simple. No. It's yes. really quite simple. And uh, it's, so if you have pain in your body, then 
um, it's because you are short of electrons. You need to get grounded and put the fire out. Yes. Yeah. So to summarize, may, maybe I could say that there are free radicals which are causing inflammation and pain in the body. And then uh, when, the, when we connect with the earth, the electrons from the earth uh, come and then attach with these free radicals and then uh, we are healthy. And we yes. have disconnected ourselves from the, from the earth and then we are uh, getting sick because of the shoes that we are wearing. And yes. it's striking because we are, uh, you know, keeping ourselves away from our fuller development, both in all of our body as well as in the feet. So there yes. are calluses that have developed for myself when I st stopped wearing shoes and how we are compromising our knee health and our joints and like everything. It's really, really stark. Like, you know, it's very um, shocking. And yes. um, I think I think a lot of people are not able to see that day. Uh, I just recently went to the mall and in India, it's not a big deal to not wear shoes, uh, right. though like 99% uh, of the people in the city would wear shoes, uh, not 99, maybe 99.9. .9. Uh, but like when people ask me and I tell them about the signs, people are just like, so away from it like completely away from it which is like right yeah we live in an inverted world i always say that so thank yep. you for sharing that yes yes, uh, yes now my next question is so you said that there is um improvement in the pain and also we mentioned like how inflammation can also be reduced which is of course causing the pain but how is it you also mentioned that the sleep is improved like you slept so well when um, you know you for the first time you came across it so <clears throat> um, what would you say uh, is the science behind that as well like could you explain how the rhythm of the earth you know works right. that it just like balances our sleep cycle yes right yes the <clears throat> the earth itself has a, a negative surface charge or it's charged with free electrons <clears throat> kind of like uh, it's invisible like oxygen and water i mean it's kind of like a layer of water all around the globe and it's, but it's electrical now <clears throat> on the sun side of the planet these electrons become very excited and <clears throat> they have you know movement and uh it's uh <clears throat> when we're grounded in the sunshine then our bodies become fully energized and the sunshine also um, creates vitamin D and it helps to maintain our normal health. But at night, <clears throat> when on the dark side of the planet, then <clears throat> this electrical phenomenon becomes very quiet, very still. So there's rhythms to the earth's uh, electrical uh, you know, there's radiate, I mean, the earth radiates electric, you know, uh, rhythms. And when we are connected to the earth, these, these rhythms kind of serve as a metronome, as a uh, rhythm. I mean, you know, our bodies sync up and our bodies begin to um, dance with the rhythms of the earth, the internal okay. hormone cascades in our internal uh, self-healing mechanisms and self um, uh, repair cycles and so on. So anyhow, <clears throat> uh, when you get grounded to the earth, then you are one and the same with the earth. Electrically, you are connected with the earth. You are part of the earth and your whole body, you know, sings with the earth. I mean, and it's like the animals in the wild. They're grounded all the time. So they're, <clears throat> they're totally connected to this rhythm and it, it impacts our sleep cycles. Um, <clears throat> at like um, and when we did our cortisol study, we found, because if you're not sleeping, your cortisol is elevated, meaning you're in a fight or flight or you're got energy, you know, you're concerned or you have distress in your home or your life. <clears throat> so anyhow, when we did the cortisol study, we found that before sleeping grounded, everybody's cortisol rhythms were all over the place. 
and and we <clears throat> we measured the cortisol every four hours for 24 hours and then we put them all together in a graph and then we put them all together as a group and we could see this cortisol look, look like the cortisol secretion profiles looked like spaghetti meaning some people were very high some people were low and it was just all over the place but 30 days later after we had grounded them for 30 days we went back and did measured the <clears throat> cortisol secretion again and it all synchronized everybody had a similar band so that meant that being connected to the earth normalized the circadian uh, uh, cortisol secretion so <clears throat> and then what's important about that is at four o'clock in the morning your body starts producing high levels of cortisol and by six o'clock, it reaches the peak of the day. That's what allows you to get up in the morning and go. And then throughout the day, it depletes all the way down. And if, you, if your cortisol is not very real low at midnight, then it'll be or, you know 10 o'clock midnight, then it'll be hard for you to sleep because the cortisol is causing you to kind of keep one eye open because you're stressed, your, your body's being flooded with cortisol because of what you're thinking or watching a TV show that's exciting or something. And <clears throat> so anyhow, but by grounding, it normalized all of that. So then the sleep cycle is normalized. Uh, sleep is autonomic, meaning it happens naturally. And if you're not sleeping well, then something is interfering with your uh, sympathetic nervous system or your fight or flight, causing you to keep one eye open, stay awake, and your body's being flooded with cortisol. So. Grounding reduces cortisol or normalizes cortisol secretion that normalizes sleep. It, it also helps a lot of people sleep better because they have less pain. Yes. When they're... Yes, of course. Yes. So it's um, really uh, bizarre for me <laughs> that we need a lot of science for like normal things, you know. And uh, in a way, it's comforting as well, because I know that the mind needs answers. Um, yes. But in very, in very simple ways, we can say that, um, you know, just get connected with nature, you know, nature that we are a part of, like, you know, in, in today's world, we feel that we are not Mother Earth, but we are, we are born out of her. And uh, when we get in her lap, through you know just lying down or just walking it just is a part of who we are and of course the, the love flows through her and we talked a lot about health and you know how cortisol comes when we are in the fight, flight and fight response and how it's you know helps with reducing cortisol and helps us with sleep as well then so uh, I have a question since I've been living barefoot um, 99.99999% of the time uh, for the last uh, uh, one and a half years or something. And um, would you say that this is the ultimate, you know, uh, tool for health? Um, because sometimes I would fall sick as <laughs> well. I'm mm -hmm. sure, I'm certain that it helps me. There is no doubt about it. Like you feel it you know, when you are yes. um, relaxed. So, but then um, would you like to just shed some light, you know, on it? Like what are the other things also that people have to do? Well, <clears throat> to, you know, to answer your question about <clears throat> when you are grounded, your body has plenty of free electrons. Yes. <clears throat> and it can reduce. I mean, the immune system is busy, you know, removing cells, damaged cells, cells that need to be reduced. Uh, you're, you're, and, and it's busy reducing pathogens and viruses and all these things. So <clears throat> if you are grounded and your body is, has lots of free electrons, everything works perfectly. You are going to have viruses come by, you are going to have colds and you're going to be exposed to things. And your immune system, you are gonna fall sick, but your immune system is gonna produce an immune response <clears throat> so that in the future you you will be pr protected from certain viruses and all those things you know your, wow. your your immune system builds immunity but it will it will help you recover <clears throat> and 
you know, maintain your health. But if you are not grounded and you get sick, then your immune system spends, creates fire in the body. Then the immune system starts spending its energy and time and resources fighting the fire of the inflammation that it's creating. So it reduces the immune system's ability to maintain all other health. So you getting, you know, uh, like you say, you, you can get sick. You're going to, you're going to be, things are going to happen. You're going to have food poisoning. Sometimes you're going to have mental poisoning. Sometimes, <laughs> you know, stress, uh, yes. you're going to have um, viruses. You're going to have pollution, you're, you know, and your body has to work hard. So the, but the, <clears throat> The more grounded you are, the more, the stronger your immune system. So the better your immune system can protect you and maintain the quality of your life throughout your life. Yes. Wow. Yeah, that really answers my question because when I washed a thing, like uh, uh, I had this question and I was like, yeah, but sometimes I do fall sick, but it's, uh, yeah, it's quite, uh, it, it clears my doubt that it's, uh, definitely helps with the healing process and makes you yes. for less sick as well. And yes. it reduces yes. the strain on the body. Yes. Right. So amazing. Then I'll say thank you, Grouding, for taking care of me so many times. <laughs> well, it's mother, yes. it's mother, it's mother Earth, Mother Nature. Yes. Yes. Exactly. How could I even doubt? Well, I really didn't doubt <laughs> for sure. Yeah. But uh, I see how it works. Yes. Yeah. Well, so, you know, health, yeah. yeah, health is the body's okay. most natural state. Yes. And and you have an immune system to protect you, and to restore. When you are damaged or things do come along, your immune system is what restores your health. So yes. it doesn't mean you're going to have perfect health forever. But the only thing the immune system does is maintain normal, natural health. If you will keep a good, healthy immune system, you're going to have health. Mm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Like that says a lot. It's not like nothing in the world that we can do to be like, okay, we will never fall sick because it will happen from here and there. But the point is how much you keep your body uh, in a state that it can like quickly come back to its balanced um, and harmonic form, you know. As you said, yes. that health is the natural state of body. I think yes. we really need to remind this to people so much. Like at a point in life, even I myself forgot. I remember I was going through like some ups and downs in my life. And health has always been a priority because of course I want to live in a healthy body. And when my health is not okay, I kind of like probably get a little bit more stressed than other people. Uh, though, even though yeah. I would say I'm very healthy, uh, yes. but um, uh, it, it kind of the world that we live in now, I constantly remind myself, you know, that this is my natural state, but I was so right. disconnected with it at some point in life when I was living in the city. So yes. I think we really need to remind everyone that, you know, guys, health is the natural state of body. And I hope you always stay connected with uh, it as well. <laughs> uh, yes. The next question that I have is, what are the other things that you would suggest uh, people to maintain their health along with grounding? And also, what is it that you also practice in your life for maintaining your health? Okay, well, the main thing is <clears throat> um, you do have to eat good, healthy food. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> it's best to eat food as close to live as possible. I mean, you do yes. have to cook food, you do certain things, but <clears throat> try to eat real food rather than prepared foods as much as possible. Yes. Uh, that's really important. <clears throat> uh, a little bit of exercise. I don't think people have to go work out in, in gyms and, and uh, health spas so much. It's like animals in the wild. They, they, you know, they, they move, they just move their bodies. They don't necessarily run races and all those kind of things, but you have to move. You have to um, move your blood. You have to uh, yeah. you know, breathe air. You have to oxygenate the tissue. So just movement is really an important thing. Yes. And 
but but one thing I, I have to say that it's the most important beyond just being connected to nature, drinking good clean water, breathing air, getting sunshine because we live indoors now. We need more sunshine, you know, to be healthy. But just nature. I mean, nature will maintain good health. The, but the number one thing that causes health, that stresses our health, is we have to maintain a good mental outlook. We have to be grounded mentally. We have to learn um, which of the beliefs that we've adopted that are uh, adversely affecting our health and remove them from our lives. We need to, um, uh, I, I guess the way to say this is, um, it's like I, I remember one time I was talking to a woman who had MS and MS is a pretty, it's, it's a very nasty um, health disorder uh, because it's <clears throat> neutrophils eating up the myelin sheath and then they lose the control of their nerves and so on. So it's a lot of pain. But anyhow, I asked this lady, I said, you know, cause she was in her mid thirties and I said, what happened that caused this the, the cause this MS. I said, you weren't inherited with it. And she said, no, I don't know. Her. And so we uh, was working with her for about 20, 30 minutes. Then all of a sudden she said, oh, I never thought about it. But the year or two before my MS developed, I had lost my house during 2008, during the financial crisis. And then she had lost, ended up getting a divorce and lost her job. So she went into a very mentally stressed state and she never grounded any of this out and I sit there and churned and that's what created anxiety irritability depression pain inflammation and eventually ms so it's very important that when you're disconnected from the earth not in tune with the natural world and in tune instead you're in your part of the uh, make-believe world, <laughs> um, you know, the material world that we create. Yes. And, and then your life is about uh, desires. You know, I, I want to do this. I have to have that. And <clears throat> those things are constantly driving hormones and messing up everything in your body. So it's really important. You can eat all the best food in the world. You can do all the good things in the world. But if you don't ground your mind, if you don't mentally ground yourself to spirit to nature um I don't, I don't hope i'm saying this right but you've got to let go of those things that come into your life and give them back to the universe and breathe and go back and and just reconnect and and let nature heal you up um grieving is normal but it's not something you want to just internalize and let it eat up your body. You have to ground all of these things out. I don't know if I made, if I hit the oh, question. No, you did. It was okay. uh, so nice. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, um, it's, um, again, I say, you know, it's like you, your wisdom is kind of benefiting me so much. I will remember also because we are just having this conversation and uh, uh, I am somebody who really likes to take care of my health, as I said before as well. And you said that, you know, eating whole food. So right now, actually, I'm on a raw diet. I'm only eating raw food. And right. um, yes, but um, I, uh, it's so important for me to remind myself that, you know, my mental health is one of the most important things and I do work yeah. on my mental health like every day you know just like trying to stay in love and as you said that you know giving out to the universe whatever you don't need just like whatever energies is like you don't need just like give it out it will take care right. of it and uh, remembering that uh, our health is also a placebo it's like our yes. life is also a placebo so if your yes. consciousness is good, your body will follow and you have to put good things in the body. But it's so, so important to keep your mental health good and yes. um, 